The Islamic Republic of Iran, a country where men enjoy far more rights than women. Many women, in particularly well-educated ones, leave the country. Tabassam Latifi would like to stay. She's established a startup in Tehran and is determined to overcome all obstacles and achieve success. Now, after the international agreement on Iran's nuclear program, many Iranians hope the country will open up. But can Latifi make it as a woman in a male-dominated society? In a small Tehran side street, Latifi works hard every day in pursuit of her goal. Her startup idea is called Maman Pass. It's an internet platform and a mobile phone app that allows customers to order home cooked Iranian food with a mouse click or a few taps on a touch screen. The meals are then delivered. Latifi enjoys being her own boss at the tender age of 29. But not everyone approves of her ambitions. Most Iranian women don't work, and they certainly don't start their own businesses. She encountered resistance even within her own family. My mom uh, told me, don't do that. You <laughs> that is not a job. <laughs> you should do a real job. You should go be a manager in some company. I don't know, you studied so much for, I don't know, like 16 years in the school and university, and you were a good student and uh, some, some things, some sort of things. Uh, but uh, uh, they, di they didn't believe my idea. In a country where women are often required to seek permission from their fathers and husbands for basic societal decisions, family support is essential in order to avoid problems. But Latifi was lucky to have one committed supporter in her corner right from the very beginning, her husband, Mehdi. I encouraged her, her to start this uh, path because he was not happy with her job at that time, uh, he thought that he's not. She, she thought that she's not doing. Uh, she she was not very useful in in that uh, job. And I told I told her that at least you uh, you may you may we have a happier life. Latifi quit her well-paid job at a bank and went freelance, throwing herself into the deep end. I have to have my own business because uh, I don't want to be a, to be an employee anymore, uh, employer I mean, anymore uh, because you don't have uh, enough uh, authority and everything to do whatever you want to make a new thing uh, that is uh, that does not exist before. You wa I wanted to uh, create something. Husband Mehdi also works for Maman Pass. He has no problem with his wife also being his boss. Behind every good woman, you might say, is a good man. It's a labor-intensive business. Latifi is heading to visit one of the Iranian housewives who cook for her food delivery platform. Nahid is hard at work. Latifi takes a look in her kitchen. The women who work for her have all passed safety, hygiene and health checks. And, of course, the food has to taste good as well. Uh, we're uh, testing every food uh, when it's gonna be in the menu 
uh, but uh, some of the foods are not too good enough and uh, are not past the uh, quality test of mom and pass. So uh, we have to tell the mom that uh, this, food, this food is not approved and uh, this, is the <laughs> this is the hardest uh, part of our job actually. Nahid has been approved. Her food is delicious. She's become a favorite among Latifi's customers. On the menu today is Mirsa Chazimi, eggplant spread. Nahid likes to cook, and she needed a job. Since my husband died, I've had to provide for myself. So at the start, I applied for office jobs. But I soon noticed that cooking was more my thing. Then I met Mrs. Latifi and heard about Mom and Paz. The company employs 29 other women in Tehran as cooks. Those women owe their jobs to Tabassum Latifi. So they're dependent on the young entrepreneur. That's a lot of responsibility for a 29-year-old Iranian woman. Nahid hastily dons a headscarf and hands over the attractively packaged food to a young man. He takes to his motorcycle. That's the only way to get through the heavy traffic in the Iranian capital. It's no accident that the delivery boy is a man. Women are allowed to drive in the Islamic Republic, but not motorcycles. Before her next appointment, Latifi takes the opportunity to meet with two friends in Tehran's most famous park, the Parc El Alay. It's an oasis of calm in the disorder of the Iranian capital. In the partial privacy of the park, different rules apply than out in the open on Tehran's streets. The park is a place where Latifi and her friends can speak openly. It's been a while since they've seen one another. One of Latifi's friends lives in Canada. She's one of many young Iranian women who have emigrated in search of a better education, greater job opportunities and more freedom. But Latifi says she's staying put. I prefer to uh, continue my life in Iran. Uh, I love living in Iran. I just want like to go visit other countries uh, as a tourist. That's it. I don't like living in other countries uh, for a long time uh, because I, I like people to speak Farsi in here and uh, I love uh, Iranian food, everything. I, I like living in Iran with my family, my friends, uh, with this culture. At the same time, she intends to continue her career. Latifi aims to show that women, too, can make their mark in Iranian commercial life. She's trying to address one of her potential shortcomings. She's attending a cooking course. Latifi admits she doesn't cook at all well. Yet she has to know what good cooking is in order to evaluate her own products. But it's not easy. The young entrepreneur has a lot on her plate. The authorities in Tehran aren't used to dealing with businesses like hers. So they have a lot of questions. Uh, people are selling products to each other and uh, we are just uh, in this in the middle of uh, this thing and uh, there is 
the, there aren't any kind of permission right now for this kind of business. But uh, we are trying to uh, ma make this whole way for the others, <laughs> maybe for us and for the others after, after us. The work of a pioneer is never easy. Latifi's days are long, and sometimes even longer, depending on Tehran traffic. Tonight, she's staying at home with her husband, Mehdi. Latifi says she doesn't spend much time pondering questions like whether it's much harder for her as a woman to start a company in Iran than it would be for Mehdi as a man. If you're not, uh, you're not ambitious enough, you can't, uh, you can't be a really, really successful uh, person because uh, you need to work so hard and uh, try to reach your targets, your objectives. Uh, if you don't have a big objective, you can't uh, reach to lower objectives. So um, you have to uh, think big and start small uh, and try to get there. This is just the beginning for Tabassum Latifi. With the international agreement on Iran's nuclear program, she may be able to attract foreign credit and investment and be able to expand. She says the first potential partners have already gotten in touch. <laughs>